decorations Start lining cats with sensation from For your eternal destination Stay tuned for the Larry W. Robinson Show. Celebrated media personality Larry W. Robinson presents Gospel Updates. Gospel Updates is the who, what, when, why, and where in the gospel music industry. Gospel Updates is a monthly magazine, weekly newsletter, video webcast, as well as a podcast. Gospel Updates has over 25 years of featuring people in the gospel music community. Gospel Updates magazine and the new Gospel Updates weekly newsletter document those who are continuing to help shape and write new chapters of this ever-evolving story of gospel. Go to www.gospelupdates.com. That's www.gospelupdates.com to get the latest issues. If you want to be featured, call or text 337-214-4046 or email gospelupdates at gmail.com for rates and details. Gospel Updates, featuring people in the gospel community for over 25 years. You're listening to The Larry W. Robinson Show. Today on the broadcast, Bishop Jason Nelson, that's his official title. You'll probably hear me say it this one time throughout this whole conversation. Bishop Jason Nelson is joining me, but uh, I have your permission to call you Jason, correct? Throughout the conversation. It's fine. (laughs) All right. Whatever you call me, I'm answering to Got it. Love it. Jason Nelson is with me. It's no secret uh, that Jason Nelson is one of my most favorite vocalists on the planet. Um, Yeah. So we'll just leave it at that. So. I, here's how I want to, to take tonight's conversation. Well, first of all, I think I asked you this already, but I want the audience to know that you said yes to this. So you came to play tonight, right? You came to have a good time. I, we- yeah, <laughs> I, I, again, I don't know exactly what this is a preamble to, but I'm on here now, so let's go. All right, all right. So um, here's what I, I'd like to do. Uh, it's no secret, I interviewed uh, Jonathan Nelson uh, about a couple of months ago. Um, and I told him that I researched that we, I think it was more than 10 years that we had a conversation in terms of the interview. And uh, he put that on me. And so uh, I was researching, researching our interview. And uh, I realized, even though I've sent, you know, text messages and you've actually recorded memos for my broadcast, we actually yeah. haven't had an interview uh, since I want to say Place of Worship, that uh, one of those first records. So that's um, easily 2008, <laughs> 2009. Mm. And I also, because working with Jonathan, I'm also going to blame Put you. On me. <laughs> I love it. It's all on you. All right. If anybody's curious, it's Larry's fault. I love it. But so, and the reason why I said that, because I want to talk about um, Jesus Reveal, even though Close is the new record. There's a song on the Jesus Revealed that I want to talk about. And that song is Forever. Oh, that's on? No, the answer. The answer. The answer. So. uh, I knew you were going to say forever. I knew it. Well, yeah. yeah, (laughs) So, uh, well, first of all, I don't think we've had the conversation, like, how did that song come about? And, um, man, those lyrics, like, especially then and even now um, going through the pandemic and, and, and things of that nature, those lyrics just ring true. God has not forgotten about us. God is in love with us and he's in love with us forever. Talk about that. Yeah. Talk about how the song came into, into being. And then of course, uh, why those lyrics are so important to you. Cause you sing it like you really mean it. I mean, I, obviously I mean it. <laughs> I don't think I sing anything that I, I, if I don't believe in a song, I'm definitely not singing it. I'm not performing it. It's not a part of my repertoire in general um, if I don't believe in it. And, and, and that's just kind of my general um, take on music, uh, period. Mm-hmm. Um, but the song really is the, was really the genesis of my wife. She walked, I was um, in a writing session with uh, Dana Saray, who has produced 
Um, basically, all my music since 20, 2010, you did the lion's share of close. Um, we were in a writing session. You know, we would always set up time that so we could kind of just vibe and figure out, you know, what are we talking about? What's, what's the slant this time around? And um, I think we just got finished writing maybe Help Me or something else, one of those songs. Um, and my wife walks in with Dana's wife, you know, as they were are, are very prone to do. And she's like, what are y'all doing? And, and, and we're like, clearly we're in a, you know, writing session, we're in the, in my kitchen. You know, I got my, you know, I have my bass out and he's playing on this little Casio that we have in the house. And um, she starts singing the lyrics to, for, she starts singing the chorus to forever. And Dana and I looked at each other and were like, oh, that might be something. So and, I'm just curious. So was she singing it to like give you a song or she just started singing those lyrics just out of the clear blue sky? She just started singing it kind of out of the clear blue. And we were like, okay. Wow. And, and like, and she was joking. She was like, forever is a long time. That's how long I love you. And, um, and she just kept saying like that one line, forever is a long time. That's how long I love you. And we looked at each other like, wait a minute. It's actually something to that. And I, I kid you not, Larry, it's probably maybe 15, 20 minutes tops. The song was completely written. All the lyrics, the arrangement, the whole nine was done. 15, 20 minutes. Um, and, you know, sometimes it is all, you, all it takes is a little nudge and the music pours out of you. And that and forever was one of those songs. All right. Wow. So now uh, the reason why I asked if you was coming to play tonight, because... Um, I have not uh, asked, ask, you know, most people know me from gospel singing on the spot. And that's what we give you a song out of the clear blue sky as they sing. So you've already appeared on the broadcast. The last time the song you did was uh, Thirsty. Well, this time, mm -hmm. before we get into these good questions, I just want, because I believe every person, especially every believer, need to hear the lyrics and the message of this song forever because oftentimes especially believers man they go through this this back and forth oh i don't think god loves me today and you know that kind of stuff and i don't think god is fickle like some of our friends and family god is consistent. not by any stretch of the imagination oh, yeah so he loves us and he loves us forever and not only that not only does he love us forever god has always loved us <laughs> Even before you got here, you were on the mind of God and he loved you. And so if you don't mind, take your liberty and just sing uh just a I mean, little bit. I mean, me singing that just a second ago, that don't count. Mm -mm, that don't count. <laughs> How does that not count? What, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> How does that not count? I'm I'm you know, okay. Um so forever is a long time. That's how long I'll love you. That's how long I'll love you forever. Forever is a long time. That's how long I'll love you. That's how long I'll love you forever. The doors of the church are open. Will there be one? <laughs> Will there be one? Well, one of the reasons why I, I wanted you to uh, to really sing it again, just so someone could hear the fact that forever is a long time, but that's how long God will love you. I think people need to to remember that message as they go throughout the day, as they go through the. Uh, we still. In the midst of a pandemic, some people are still dealing with job loss. Some people have lost um, uh, family members uh, doing this stuff. Yeah. Pastors have lurched, have lost church members, and even I, I've heard, I've heard a pastor like man, pastors have lost churches, churches, churches too, and they're wondering like, is God punishing them? But is he, is he, you know, has he forgotten about them? I don't think that's the case. I think God still, God knew the pandemic. Even in the Bible, it says that plagues and things came up on the land. You know, God knew these things would happen, is happen, and some things will happen. But one thing that we can remain sure of is that God loves us and he really does have our best interest at heart. Agreed. All right. Okay, so Jason, I've gotten some questions some of these people you may know, and then, of course, some of them you may not. Um, let's start. I'm going to go to Texas. 
you'll probably know this young lady from um, BET's Sunday's Best. <clears throat> Most people know her as Mama Sue. Mama Sue, better known as Sue Roseberry or Sue Roseberry, better known as Mama Sue, has this question for you. I think it's good too. She says, I know you grew up in a God-centered home, mm -hmm. but what were your aspirations for a career growing up? Did you see yourself as a preacher or a bishop? And then part two of her question is, do you think the role of bishop in the church has changed with the inclusion of younger men as you, um, such as yourself in a role with a little more swag? I like that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So number one, um, my aspirations when I was young, um, I'm actually a little bit of a closet nerd that a lot of people probably don't know. And um, I was actually studying in college at Morgan State um, to be an electrical engineer. So, oh, wow. no, preaching and pastoring were not anything that I desired at all. When At 17, my dad asked me what I wanted to do. I said, I don't know, but I know I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to be a preacher like you. Wow. Literally, I told him that at 17. So, um, no, that was definitely not on the docket for me. This is a complete God thing, um, the fact that I'm here. Uh, to answer the second part of the question, um, do I think that the role of the bishop has changed? I think I'm, I'm trying to remember. Do you think the role of a bishop in the church has changed with the inclusion of younger men such as yourself in the role with a little more swag? No, I don't think the role has changed at all. I think the role is concrete. It's, you know, I think it's about presentation and appeal now more so than the role changing. Now, do some people not actually function in the role of a bishop, even though they're young and are bishops? Well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure, there are a whole bunch of, of people who have the title, but not the functionality. Um, and more people, are, some people, are, I shouldn't say more, some people are more interested in vibing and, and being popular and, and living out the the... Um, accoutrement, if you will, of being in the, in the episcopacy without really fulfilling the role that the episcopacy calls for. So um, I don't know that the role has changed. You know, are, are bishops more swaggy now? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, people are more into fashion, those kinds of things, but it, it has not altered the role of the bishop at all. You think if Jesus was in this dispensation living today, he'd have some Gucci and some Louis Vuitton and all that? I doubt that he'd have Gucci and Louboutin, but he probably would be swagged out a little bit. Got you. All right. I, 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 he has a, he had a message in his day that was relevant to everybody in that day. And I think that he would be relevant today, but I don't know that he'd be, you know, you know, with his Ferragamo belt on and Gucci right. shoes. I, I don't know that that would be the case. I guess. Maybe, but I doubt it. <laughs> All right. Nikki Berry, she's a singer and songwriter out of Houston, Texas. Nikki Berry asks, how do you feel about the gospel industry and does it directly affect how you move forward with your music ministry? And she's put an addendum, uh, authenticity versus fitting industry trends and sound. Why do people keep asking me this question? Oh, now, really? I feel like this question is one, I feel like it's a loaded question, number one. Okay. Number two, I feel like people want me to be edgy. And this question begs <laughs> for me to step out of alignment to, you know, okay, so how do I feel about gospel? I, about the industry. I feel better about it now than I have in the last few years. I, let, let me What's start by it? saying that. Okay. Um, I feel like I feel like the industry is turning in a good way. Okay. Um, back to this, back to to the concept of what gospel music represented mm -hmm. um, in in the late '90s, early 2000s. There was diversity in gospel music, and it made us so much better, in my opinion. And I'm not necessarily talking about the quality of the music, even though I think that was good, and in some cases better than how we approach music now. Um, the production is better now than it was back then, obviously. Mm -hmm. But like the quality of the songs, the the way we were, the way gospel approached messaging, um, 
there were more people who were taking chances in gospel music back then. You know what I mean? A lot of what we would call trendsetters back then that I think we fell out of love with the ideal that there are subgenres to gospel music and that everybody doesn't have to take on um, a, a sameness, if you will. Ooh, I'm trying good. to be nice. Okay, that's I'm good. <laughs> trying to be up here because I can go a little bit hard. But there, there has been a a um, almost a deliberate chase towards being identified as the same thing, same sound, same kind of look, that kind of thing. And I think the industry is starting to wake up to the fact that we can actually do more than that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. choirs are still relevant. Praise and worship is still relevant, but you still need your more avant-garde kind of worship. Like Dietrich Hatton has always been edgy, always, right? Even he, from that first he's never, he, he's never stopped being edgy. But then there, were, there was a, a counterpoint to him. Like you, you had your Dietrich Hatton, then you had your, and, and I'm just throwing this name out, like a Darwin Hobbs, who wasn't, who was more reserved, more kind of praise and worship centric. Both of those entities helped to encapsulate, if you will, the, the you know, bookends of what gospel was. So you had Dietrich Hatton on one end, Kirk Franklin, you know, those people, and you had your more traditional people on, on the other side. Th that breath that width of gospel is what made it good. We got, we hit a slump in the, you know, last maybe three or four years where everything kind of started to sound the same. Um, and I think now we're out of it. And, and people are starting to express the fact that they can be gospel and not be, you know, praise and worship -y, You know what I mean? So you got your J.J. Harrison and his, and, and his uh, uh, level of praise and worship. You got... Um, Maverick City and their level of praise and worship. And I don't know if even if Maverick is really gospel. I don't know that they're gospel. I think they, they're more CCM than gospel, but we tr they trend more towards our side. Um, and, you know, so I, I think gospel is becoming more diverse again, and it's healthy and good. And I think it's going to, to benefit the genre holistically, even like... Uh, 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 quartet music is, is making a resurgence. Listen, that is great quartet ain't never went no way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but what I'm saying is there's a level of, of popularity attached to it yeah. that it hasn't had, you know, prior to where we are right now, except back in the, you know, the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, where we were like, oh, yeah, this is it. But now people are starting to understand, like, oh, it's some good stuff over there. So I, I think I, I'm starting to really like it again. Um, but there was a space where I was like, eh. Got you. All right. That was the long form answer. No problem. Um, pastor Tyrone Jefferson, he's an awesome pastor out of New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, his church is affectionately called The Tab. But his question okay. is, how did you keep your sanity <laughs> in the midst of this pand pandemic? How do you keep your sanity in the midst of the pandemic? You know what? I had to reset. This, and honestly, I can only answer this question from a spiritual perspective. Um, I kind of got on edge during the pandemic, especially in 2020. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to really take some time away and refocus, mm -hmm. recenter, you know, ensure that why I was doing this was just as important as what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And um, that's kind of how I didn't lose it. Because having to, the pressure of having to manage the, 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 being the face of the ministry with no rescue at all. I mean, nobody to lean on, but the, but the main person, the main guy, the main woman, man, that, that was a lot. It, and, and it definitely drove me crazy. As an introvert, I had no retreat and being robbed of that definitely created a level of tension in me that I didn't know I could probably get to. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I had to refocus, I had to recenter and um, pay attention to the fact that to a degree, I was starting to kind of drift. And once I got myself recentered, I, I've been able to function at a much better clip now. 
Gotcha. You know, you uh, you mentioned something. It was going to be one of my questions later on, but I'll ask it now. Uh, you kind of answered it, though. Um, my question was going to be, are you an introvert with extrovert tendencies to be able to flow in ministry or? <laughs> no, I'm an introvert. I'm not an introvert. So I'm you, so you, what you're describing is what's called an ambivert who has tendencies on both sides. I am an introvert who is graced for ministry. And the, so I lean on the grace to do what God has called me to do because my personal preference is not in the forefront at all. And that's okay. And that's okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, this is Jessica Young. She's a singer songwriter out of Atlanta, Georgia. Jessica Young asked this question. How does he keep a consistent intimacy with God? And then she wants to know, how can someone collaborate with him on the song? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, con you know what? Honestly, consistency with God depends on us. It it's not him, it's us. Mm -hmm. we, all, we ultimately are the problem. Um, and this is going to be a shameless plug, but there, there's a song on, re on the record called Absent Minded that deals oh, with yes. that particular facet. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we can dig into it a little bit later on, but, but the idea of kind of letting God do all the work, I think, is what gets us in trouble as believers. Um, because we operate from the perspective that there is no onus or responsibility on our part with regard to maintaining our relationship. But, like, you know, I'm, I'm married. I've been married for 24 years. I can't let my wife do all the work, you know, and like, and, and I can't say, well, I love you. And that's enough. Mm. There's, there is, there are things that I have to do that help bolster and, and, and shore up our relationship. And the same thing happens in the spirit realm where you got to consecrate, you have to pray, you have to keep your ear open to God. Um, there's some things you got to, you, you have to get rid of. There's the level of submission and obedience. That, has, that, that, that comes into play when, with regard to um, building up our relationship with God. And, and um, we, we have to be intuitive in that particular regard. Um, with regard to the second part, if you, you know, trying to do a collab or something like that, um, send an email to my booking um, manager and uh, we can see what we can do from there. Um, a lot of what, what I do now is very, very intentional. And um, it has to make sense for me. It definitely has to make sense for me. So it's book Jason Nelson at gmail.com. Got it. Great question. Uh, Trin and I always mess up her name. Trinisha A. Green. Trinisha A. Green is a songwriter out of Chicago, Illinois. And she says, what one word would he provide to worship leaders today to encourage them? One word? <laughs> one word consistency that's good that's and good. if i had a, if i had another i would say authenticity mm -hmm. they kind of go hand in hand mm -hmm. but I, I but you you we we have to we definitely have to find a way to not be haphazard in what we do, especially as worship leaders. You know, if, if you're loosey-goosey, nobody's going to believe you. You know, if you're up one day, down the next, you know, you, you're cussing on a post one day and then you say hallelujah on a on post the next, people are not going to believe you. You know, you know, bitter and sweet water are, are, are not designed to come out of the same place. That's what James says. So I, so I think we have to be a, a very consistent and, a, again, a, authentic. Um, with who we are, with what God has called us to do. Um, love the space that God has called you to. That's good. Okay, so I want to ask this question uh, to get back to the, um, the record Close or the project Close. We're talking today with Jason Nelson. His latest release is titled Close. And Rhonda Eaglin Jordan, she's a radio announcer out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. She wants to know what was your inspiration for this project? Great question. This project really, the, the, the impetus for this project was really um, a desire to describe what happens when you get in proximity to God. That's literally what the whole record is about. Every song 
points to some facet of intimacy with God, um, whether it be the realization that he is good and, you know, the benefit of being able to use his name or recognizing, yeah, I've been a little bit derelict with regard to my relationship with God. So this, this whole record is, is the aspects of proximity. That's good. So, okay. So we kind of had a pre-conversation and so now I'm about to get to the question that I really want to know. <laughs> um, so I got the single residue and uh, I was like, Hmm, this, this is a little different. It's a little different. And I think I was just listening for maybe just my classic Jason type song. We'll put mm -hmm. it like that. And so, um, you know, I kind of listened to it and I was like, mm. and then uh, uh, listened to it again. I was like, mm. and, um, but I listened to it again and I'm like, oh, wow. I love these lyrics. So a lot of people that I talked to, because who are Jason fans like I am, you know, they was like, mm. and so I was like, mm -mm, go back and listen to the lyrics. And so right. people go back and intentionally listen to those lyrics. Lyrics. Man. I'm like, man, God <laughs> does a complete work. He don't just leave stuff undone. He does a complete work. So uh, let's talk about Residue. It's the current single that everyone is listening to now. And uh, for, for classic Jason fans that like that, you know, forever is a long time and thirsty and all those songs. Tell us why this song "Residue" is important, and why I think this these lyrics were intentional. Well, you said you are uh, intentional like that, but I can tell that these lyrics were intentionally written for this song. Okay, so um, and is this a song you wrote? This, this is your yeah. I, I wrote everything, but I think all but one on the record. Oh, okay, good. Two, all but two songs on the record I wrote. Okay, um, or had a hand in writing. Let me, let me say gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so, res one, I don't know that residue is that far divergent from what people know me as. It's the vibe that makes Maybe me that's go. it. <laughs> Maybe that's like, it. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute, because this, it, 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 it doesn't vibe like a praise and worship song at all. Yeah, especially and, when it first come and, on. And, uh, what's the first lyrics? That, uh, Take me to the water. Yeah, so even that is just, it's just a little different. I was like, hmm, okay. But intentional lyrics, I love it. Yeah, and so all, the, everything, this record was more intentional than, than, I, don't, than I think maybe the, the, more, the most intentional record I've ever done was Jesus Revealed. Um, I think this record is probably right under that with regard to intentionality because we, again, we wanted to tell this story about proximity. Um, Residue was the first song that we recorded for this record. And um, wow. I, again, I'm just having a conversation uh, with some of my um, songwriting partners, Danny and Jerome Baylor. And um, we would, you know, just, they were like, okay, so what do you want to talk about? What is this record going to be about? So when I kind of really started to dig deep and started talking about proximity and being close and, you know, what happens when you get in the presence of God, um, they came with the idea, Residue was not my idea, it was Danny and Jerome's idea that they brought to me. And um, we wrote the rest of the song together. But when they brought, you know, she said, they take me to the water, body going under. And when I come up, I can feel the sun shining on my bed. I heard those lyrics and I was like, this is it. For one, I, I wanted to shift because we're doing studio records. So now we have the ability to do whatever I want to do. You know what I mean? So we're not locked into whatever we can reproduce in a live setting. And um, but when I heard those lyrics, I was like, "This is it." One of the th you, we don't talk about baptism, you know. One of the tenets of our faith that's you don't have. It's not a whole bunch of contemporary songs dealing with baptism. So residue is a song about baptism, you mm -hmm. know, water baptism, but it's also that you know spiritual baptism. Spirit, yeah. And that when say it again. No, I was just saying spiritual baptism too. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a natural baptism, there's a spiritual baptism, you know, in, in, the, in the Bible talks about multiple baptisms. I'm not, I'm not going to get into the theology of it all, because um, then we'll be here all night, you know, going on a, you know, down, down a rabbit hole. But when you start talking about being baptized into God, one of the benefits of being baptized into God, and, and whether that be by water baptism or by spiritual baptism, is if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, 
old things have passed away and behold, all things are now become new. So residue encapsulates that idea that through baptism, we are made new and the old no longer has a right to who you are. Thus, no residue. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, I love it. Well, you know, like I like songs that, which is probably why I like forever, that really uh, captures one, the tenets of our faith, and then the positions of who we are in Christ, what Christ has done, you know, those kinds of things. Because mm -hmm. I think as believers, we need to know that we have a position in him that's secure. <laughs> you know, he's done a finished work. Uh, you can still be sanctified and it's just not uh, sanctified meaning I'm just putting on the right clothes and those kinds of things. No, he sanctified right. you for a purpose. You know, all of those things. So I love in, in, intentional li uh, lyrics like that. I'm gonna, I have some other questions for you, but I want to talk about the record. Uh, the first song, Close, which is what's on that shirt, the lead song uh, on the uh, the record, I absolutely love. Close, close, close. On sale now for $19.99. Uh, but <laughs> I don't want nobody to know. Don't go, don't do it, don't do it. Um, I went to the website, I did not see right. what is he talking about. Right. <laughs> don't do it. Right. So even like close and, and you know, another you, you you asked me, I think before we started, but what's another one of my favorite songs on this record? And it's called Show Me the Meaning. Yeah. That is this. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? This this and, and this record kind of reminds me of a conversation that you're having with God in these lyrics. Um, so, yeah. So let's talk about close and then oh, let's that, talk that about show me the meaning. Is. You what know, the whole record show, is? Show me the meaning is definitely a conversation. Right. You know, it literally it's like, okay, I forgot. Okay. I, I really forgot who I was talking to for a minute. Yeah. When I forget all the stuff you've done, the God, you, you, you know, the one who made the heavens and the universe, um, the one who gave his life so I could be in it. You know what I mean? So and it's all of those things. You answer prayers, you heal, you deliver, you give victory. You, you've opened up Red Seas, like you've done big miracles, but you've also done personal miracles for me, and I forget about it. Yeah. You know, so the, the course is I'm done complaining about my blessings. And the, and the, the real issue is, and I, and I believe this is to be true, especially in people who have been saved a long time, that the blessings of God are, are, are not novel anymore. They're, they're not they're not fresh for us because we get it every day. It's like manna, you know what I mean? So the, the children of Israel, every day, six days a week, um, except on the day before the Sabbath where they would collect for two days, every day they ate miracle. Every single day for over 40 years, you had a miracle for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It is easy to allow that to, to become novel in your life. And it's like, so what are we going to eat? Well, you know it's going to be man in the bar. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? Now it's not even special. It's not precious. And we take it for granted. Mm -hmm. And Show Me the Meaning is a song that talks about, I've been with God all this time. He is continuously good to me. And I act like it ain't nothing. Wow. So Show Me the Meaning like really, really grabs the believer by the throat and is like, wake up. Right. This like what he's doing is it's like we still have to be like, yo, what God did was really amazing. Even if it's small, we have to recognize it as something that is beyond our capability. And it is a blessing. It's the miracles of God. And, you know, show me the meaning is a reminder to kind of, you know, get yourself together. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Um, and this just happened today. So it's just fresh. But sometimes when I get to the place where, um, it's like God wants to remind me that he's God in my life. <laughs> um, I'll see, like today, um, I saw a bird in the parking lot eating. And like for somebody else to be like, oh, I look that bird eating. But instantly it reminds me like the bird, he feeds the bird. How much more is he not going to provide for you? So and the um, birds that don't sow or reap. This the Bible. Jesus was very, very clear 
when he said, when you look at the birds, they the center, neither yeah. sow nor reap, but they eat every day. Every day. Every, every day. day. Are you not more valuable than a bird? It's a very, very profound question that we forget. We forget. And that's why Show Me the Meaning is one of the, the songs on, 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 the, on the record. Because I'm so close to God. He does stuff for me that is not even precious mm. anymore. That's an insane mentality. Well, even we used to kind of mention this with your wife, but even we get so common with each other, we sometimes get that same commonness with God. But so I think even in the natural, even if we we see people and the things that they do as special and that, mm -hmm. you know, like, wow, this person really went out of their way to do whatever it is and do it consistently, especially if you've been married, if your wife has done something consistently for you year after year or day after day, it's like, wow, you know, and it's the same with God. Every day you wake up, you can count on it that you're going to be breathing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I really love this record. Close is the latest um, project from Jason Nelson. It features such songs as close. Uh, Show me the meaning. <laughs> listen, when you get the project, listen to all of it, but I really want you to intentionally listen to show me the meaning as well as residue absent-minded breathe all of them are good but these, these three songs show me the meaning residue and absent-minded i really want you to dig into those lyrics and even if you have to listen to it over and over again let those lyrics be a blessing to you yeah and, and i you know i'm apostolic so i mean you know, i can't speak for, for a whole lot of people we, we i believe in in um in the blessing of the apple product but um and on on apple music if you you there's an option that you have where you can turn turn on the lyrics and actually really? read the lyrics with the song. Yes. Come on. And, um I would say this is why you, this is why you gotta come over to the right side. <laughs> well, I gotta you know, listen, I got an iPhone, but I have Yahoo Music. It is this is an iPhone, but I have Yahoo Music <laughs> on my uh as my my music of choice. So I listen to it on, on Yahoo Music. So yeah, I need to okay. I need to listen to it on Apple Music, is what you're telling me. <laughs> Yeah, and you can actually read the lyrics to every song. They're actually okay. on there. Um, right. And so so you can get exactly what's being said, gotcha. exactly what's being transmitted. That's my little shameless plug. Apple didn't pay me for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Isaiah Jones out of Dallas, Texas has this question. What does Jason do for vocal care? Because I've never heard him hoarse. Oh, well, he ain't been paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, you just ain't been paying attention because the truth is, man, I, I get hoarse a lot. Um, now I, I actually just went and saw my ENT not too long ago, oh, wow. and they took me off of coffee. There's something in coffee that that um has a deleterious effect on me vocally, so I can't drink coffee anymore. Um, uh, called tannic acid. I didn't know that it was in coffee, and I love coffee. Like I, I don't drink. You're like cappuccinos and okay. you know, give me three three sugars and two creams. I drink my coffee black. I want to taste coffee. I like the taste of coffee. And um, you know, that was one of the things that I that I recognize that um you gotta listen to your body. And that's number one. You gotta listen to your body. If something, if you feel like something's going on, go and get checked out. Um, beyond that, rest and hydration are the number one and number two ways to maintain vocal stability over a long period of time. Rest and hydration. Got to drink water and you have to get rest. And you period. know what? That's just not for singers. That's just for life period. Rest and hydration. Yeah. yeah. So that's good advice. Uh, Pastor Kevin Riley out of uh, Arkansas would like to know, um, uh, how do you balance pastoring? How do you balance being a pastor and your singing career? Um, the art of saying no. This is a very easy question. I've learned that I'm not going to be everywhere. I've also learned that not every stage is for my feet. And I made peace with that. Um, Ooh, I've learned say, that say that again. Not every stage is for my feet. I'm, I'm okay with that. Wow. It, it took some. It took me some time to mature to that place. 
Because there's something I'm like, God, I don't understand. How come they, they can do it, but I can't? And, and the Lord said to me, just as clear as day, I don't want you on every stage. Wow. So I said, okay. And once I made peace with that, you know, because, you know, you're going to argue and try to bargain with God and all of that. Once I made peace with it, um, I've been definitely satisfied <laughs> with the results of that decision. But honestly, I've just learned to say no. I've learned that um, my family comes first, you know, God, then my family, then church, then ministry. Um, and I'm not changing that hierarchy at all. If it interferes with me being a good dad, I'm not going to do it. If it interferes with um, my relationship with my wife, I'm not going to do it. And ultimately, if it interferes with my call as a pastor and as a leader, I'm not going to do it. And um, again, I've made peace with that. And there's some people who, who may not live in that space, but for me, no. Nah. If, it, if it's going to jack up the, the things that keep me centered, I'm not doing it. That's good. I do want to, um, I just want to mention that um, singer songwriter Ike Moore, singer songwriter and pastor Rod Todd, as well as um, Nefertiria Clofus asked that same question. How do you balance being a pastor okay. and um, being a singer? Uh, okay, this is a funny question. Um, VJ McCoy, you got to know him. He's a comedian. He wants to know, uh, how does it feel to have a famous brother? <laughs> uh, like it feels to have a not famous brother, I guess. <laughs> no, I don't, in all honesty, I don't even know how to answer that question. You know, he, Jonathan is who he is, you know, and, and it's regular. Our relationship, who we are in the industry has no bearing on how we, re, you know, how we relate to each other on a regular basis. And I mean, no bearing other than the fact that we are each other's most ardent supporters. I don't, I, it's just like anybody else with a brother. I don't know. Got you. Got you. Got you. Okay. Uh, Titus Glenn, uh, singer and songwriter out of Dallas, Texas, who, by the way, this is a plug for him. He has a live recording coming up this uh, uh, this weekend at the time that we're recording this and the time that we're airing this. He wants to know, how did you start songwriting? How did you start your journey into songwriting? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know what? For me, and it was back in the late 90s. Oh, the wow. late 90s. Um, yeah, I've, I've been writing music for a very, very long time. Um, and I've been, been trying to break into the industry well over 20 years now. Um, I shouldn't say trying to break into the industry as if I'm not in it. I was here. You know, but, I was getting ready to say that. <laughs> <I'm playing laughs> that <song. laughs> um, so I, for, for me, songwriting, it started with, you know, being a musician and wanting to articulate how I was feeling. And uh, I, I recognized early on that I had a gift to articulate my thoughts, you know, via prose and lyrics and, and, and melody. Um, so that was in the, again, the, the early, the, the late 90s and, and early 2000s is when I started to figure out. I would say, you know, no, I got to go probably 96, 95, 96 is probably when I started. Um, kind of writing and but and again it was through the lens of me being a musician and wanting to express myself in a way that other people could kind of grab a hold to so it was really just about I needed I, I needed a, a mechanism to express writing became that and um, once the more I started learning about God the more information I had to, to pull from and the more I, the, as I grew and matured in the God the more information I had to pull from and songwriting just became easy for me but I, the, I i think the easiest the the hardest part about songwriting is getting out of the way of music just let it come don't try to make it happen just let it happen mm -hmm. and um i think you'll be a lot more successful versus i need a word that rhymes with orange <laughs> like, <laughs> i don't know that orange has a word that rhymes with i got you Hey, um, and this is just, I'm just, as hearing you say it, have you ever was sitting down to write a sermon or to, to get a sermon together? And in the midst of that, a song just boom, there it is. Yeah, study has definitely led me to songs. Absolutely. 
Jesus Revealed was all from study. Oh, wow. The whole record was from a series I taught on the name. It was called The Revealed God. Oh, That was the name of the series. And Me, I'm, I'm just curious because I like sermons too. Do you have that series available for us to? I don't know. Oh. I'd have to go and look. Okay. What's interesting is I have not bothered to look for it. We probably have it, uh, have it in our um, in our media room at the church. I gotta go and look. That's a, if you have question. it, I'd love to to buy that. I'd love to hear the inspiration of that. That's a, that's a great question. I, I gotta go and look. Okay. All right. So yes. So yes to that question. Um, and I cut you off. I want you to finish. You who's going to say something? Else. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Zay Lamb. Where I stopped. <laughs> so, Zay Lamb is an uh, emerging artist out of Houston, Texas. Edgy guy, kind of. Um, he wants to know when did you know, and then he says, like, really know that this was your calling. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh oh, <laughs> my calling is for pastoring. Really? Even though you told your dad at 17 that that's what you didn't want to do? No, but because at that time I didn't know. Oh. I didn't know. And, and I wasn't trying to know. He <laughs> said, and I wasn't trying to know. I, I love it. Trying. When I say I was not interested, if, if, if you know, so I heard God tell me that he had called me to preach. That was at 17. And I like I heard him say, you, you are called to preach. So I, I knew that. Um but I did nothing to develop it, you know, even though, well, I shouldn't say that. We had preaching classes, teaching classes, things of that nature. And I was, you know, I was, they were always interesting to me, but I had no desire for it. Um, but then when I was in my early, maybe 30, maybe 30, um, I start feeling this pull towards ministry. And I was like, Nah, fam, I don't want no parts of that, and, you know, um, and what happened was my dad had a stroke and we were driving to the hospital and God spoke to me clear as day, quit your job and go and work for your father. And, and, like, and I think in the back of my mind, I was like, yo, this is a setup. Don't do it. I was like, no, nah. I told my wife, and I, I said, I said, babe, I, I just heard the Lord say, we, I, I'm supposed to work at the church and quit my job. And she said, absolutely not. So I'm like, <laughs> I love it. We good. But ultimately my call, um, and I found out some years later after working at the church that I was called to pastor, that that's my, that's one of the, I was born to be a pastor, gifted to sing, but born to be a pastor. Now the, the, to, to answer the question, there is a little bit of overlap because Part of my assignment as a singer is ministry. You know what I mean? So there, there is a grace there. And there, there is part of my calling overlaps in that particular facet. But my call is to pastor. Um, and I, so to answer that question, I was, you know, um, at church. And, and I, I knew just sitting in, in the office that I was supposed to do this full time and uh, do this as, as a pastor. And I hated knowing that because it was the one thing I didn't want to do. I was trying to be perpetually an assistant pastor to my brother, um, oh, James, yeah, who, yeah, James, who was also yeah. a pastor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was, I'm thinking I'm going to serve under him. I, it was never my intention to be the front guy as a, as a pastor, but it was God's. Wow. That's something. Okay. I got two similar questions. So I'm going to just ask them together. Um, Singer, producer, songwriter Tyree Cottrell Newton, as well as um, pastor and social media influencer Marcus Gill, pretty much asked the same question, which is, as an artist, songwriter, and producer, do you approach each differently, and is one more fulfilling than the other? Yeah, you have to approach them differently because they all have different assignments with regard to the music. So um, the songwriter is about, is about, okay, what's the language that I'm transmitting? Mm -hmm. The singer is, you know, what is the vocality of how I transmit that language? You know what I mean? So, because the lyrics are one thing, you know, I need the O, I need the is a song that works, but how it's transmitted vocally 
determines to a large degree how it's received. So you'd be like, I need the oh, I need the every hour, I need the. If, if I transmit it that way, there may be somebody who grabs it and there may be somebody who doesn't. But if you add a couple of melismas, in, I need it all, the all, I need the. Now there's a different group of people who are like, okay, now I want to hear that. So it's, it's, it's about how, how you're transmitting the message. You know, writing is the message. Singing is how you're transmitting the message. Production is how I'm capturing what is being sung to ensure that it can be heard the way it was intentionally sang or heard the way it was intentionally played. So they all play different roles um, and you got to approach each one with a, a certain level of, um, a, you know, a certain degree of, of acumen in order to make it palatable for the listener. Let's stay there. I, I was trying to find a way to ask this question um, because I know people want to know. People listen to you as a, as a man or a male singer. You know, I listen to, to you. Um, uh, some people, you know, even me, Daryl Coley, when we first got into God, I was mm -hmm. like, man, oh my gosh, if I can only just do some of that, you know, uh, the Reverend James Moore and, you know, all those singers. And then, of course, now you got uh, these younger singers that are listening to people like you, Jason Nelson, even Jonathan, Tone and all that. How do you as a singer balance um, the delivery versus I'm a singer. I got this gift. I can do this. So I'm going to do it because I can't do it. You know what I mean? How do you balance? I do it because I can do it. And I do it because I think this, this musically will make sense and deliver the message that I'm trying to convey. Um, I, one, I think you got to let the music express itself. That's number one. Um, if I'm purposefully not singing runs, you know, to try to prove to somebody that I don't have, you ain't got to sing no runs in order to, okay, well, now I'm not being authentically who I am because mm -hmm. if, if, if singing melismas runs are part of who I am, that Kimberell is not interesting without melismatic delivery, period. Why? Because it is a part of who she is, how she hears chords and what she knows she can do and sing in and around those chords and progressions is what makes Kim so unique. Everybody doesn't have that. Here's what's interesting. People can repeat what she did and it does not have the same effect because it is authentically who she is. So as a singer, one of the things we have to do, one is I have to figure out who I am as a singer, I have to figure out who I am as a musician. And then I have to be okay living in that space, even if it doesn't feed the desire of everybody that's listening. Mm. That is one of the biggest and the hardest things to discipline in a singer is I can't give you everything in one song. It'd be overkill. If I give you all that I can do, you can be like, oh, okay, can we get through, <laughs> right. you know, Three words without a run, you know what I mean? It's like, right. come on. So it, it, I think there's a discipline attached to it. It's an art in all, in, in all honesty. And the people who have mastered the art are the ones who are interesting. And the, the people who have mastered the art are the ones who build a following because people respect authenticity. If, if you know, if, if I'm trying to be, if all I'm doing is singing everything like Daryl Coley, like, yeah, right. Daryl Coley was Daryl Coley. He was so significant to our genre vocally, you know, but I can't sing, I can't be a clone of, of Daryl Coley and be authentically Jason Nelson. It's, it's impossible. And I think we, we have to be a little bit more deliberate in that particular regard um, with, you know, who are you? How do, how do you want to say it? How do you feel? What do you feel is most important with you transmitting this particular set of information? And I think when we do that, we'll see um, a lot more people not only listen to gospel music, but respect it. In the church, I mean, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about outside, talking about those people in the church. 
That's good. Jason Nelson, first of all, let me say thank you. I, I didn't realize we were going to go this long. <laughs> I had planned for uh, 30 minutes. Yes, it went by so fast, though. But I listen, I am most appreciative that you have taken the time to, to talk with me today. I sincerely appreciate and love your ministry. Um, I love this record. Again, I really want people to get close. Close, C-L-O-S-E, close is the name of it. Um, when you get it, all of the music is good, but I really want you to listen to Show Me the Meaning, Residue, and Absent-Minded. Those songs have really impacted me, so I really want you to listen to those songs. And let, and let me give you all a clue. You. Those songs are right after each other. You can just play. Oh. <laughs> song on. number one. And song number two <laughs> is Show Me the Meaning, Number three is residue. Number four is absent-minded. Right. Featuring the Chrisette Michelle. Yes. Great, great project. I love it. It's available everywhere. Great music is sold now. Uh, Jason, any final thoughts and comments you have for our listening audience today? No, man. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Bless you, sir. All right, go get close. It's available everywhere. Great music is sold. And while you're there, go get all this other music, especially get uh, from the answer. Uh, forever is a long time. <laughs> but get all of his music. Be a blessing to him. And um, and listen, and, I, and he did not ask me to say this, but I'm going to say this. Follow him on uh, his ministry page. He's an incredible singer. But he is also a dynamic pastor and preacher. So check that out, too. Uh, he got several sermons on, on YouTube. Go check those out. I think there will be a blessing to you as well. Thanks for listening. We'll have more after this. That, Bless you, sir. More after this. Stay tuned. Stay, Stay tuned, tuned for the Larry, Larry w. w. Robinson, Robinson Show. Show. Celebrated media personality Larry W. Robinson presents Gospel Updates. Gospel Updates is the who, what, when, why, and where in the gospel music industry. Gospel Updates is a monthly magazine, weekly newsletter, video webcast, as well as a podcast. Gospel Updates has over 25 years of featuring people in the gospel music community. Gospel Updates magazine and the new Gospel Updates weekly newsletter document those who are continuing to help shape and write new chapters of this ever-evolving story of gospel. Go to www.gospelupdates.com. That's www.gospelupdates.com to get the latest issues. If you want to be featured, call or text 337-214-4046 or email gospelupdates at gmail.com for rates and details. Gospel Updates, featuring people in the gospel community for over 25 years. You're listening to The Larry W. Robinson Show. Inspiration for your eternal name.